fun because if you don't have any fun, I don't have any fun. If I don't have any fun, there's no sense in me doing this, okay? The second rule is if you have a question, ask it. Don't get back on the bus and go, oh, I wish I would have asked, but he wouldn't have told me anyway. If I know the answer, I'll be happy to tell you. If I don't know the answer, I'll tell you that too, okay? Okay. We're going to start off with how in the world I get involved with this. That's usually the first question people ask. Well, it's a long story, but here we go. Back in 1985, I was hired by the city of Fremont as a police officer. A little bit about Fremont, we're a community of about 20,000 population, but we are the county seat. So during the daytime, we may have as much as 80, 90,000 people go through town, but only 20,000 put their head on a pillow at night. Okay, so a small community, right? Within the first three years of being on the job here, I was involved in two shootings. Now think about that, officers in Cleveland, Detroit, Big cities go their entire career and never be involved in a shooting. Here I am in a community of 20,000 involved in two in three years. Well, they'll come. They must have got separated or lost. Anyway, I was involved in two and three years. I got to thinking there's got to be a better way to do this job, right? They weren't afraid of us. That was the problem. If, if it took five of us to get them in handcuffs and take them to jail, they used that as a badge of honor. It took five of them to bring me in here. How many did it take to bring you in? Okay? So I got to thinking, what are they afraid of? And the only thing I could come up with was a dog. Because even if you like dogs, if a big dog comes up to you quickly, you get a little afraid, right? Yeah. And if you don't like dogs, a little chihuahua comes up to you and you're afraid. Right? So we got to remember back in 1986, 1987, it wasn't like it was today as far as the internet. I couldn't just get on the internet and find out all kinds of information about what a dog would do for us. So it took me about six, eight months to compile information on where I could go to get a dog, how much a dog would cost, you know, what can a dog do for us, so on and so forth. But once I got that information compiled, I went to my chief. Now a little bit about my chief, I gotta kinda be careful because the sun's setting back there. <laughs> he was from West Virginia, does that tell you anything? <laughs> it should. Okay, he was a good old boy. When he told you yes, that's exactly what he meant. If he told you no, that also was exactly what he meant. There was no ifs, ands, and buts of conversation after that point. Right? So I take this information into him. I show it to him. I said, Chief, what do you think about getting a dog for our police department? He pulled his glasses down at the end of his nose and said, Woods, get the hell out of my office. <laughs> kind of answered my question, didn't it? Okay, and again, I knew not to argue, so I pick up my stuff, I walked out. About six months later, we had another shooting. This time, by the grace of God, I was off. It happened during the day. Uh, officer pulled up to a house on a domestic violence call. A guy came outside, shot at the officer. The officer shot back at him. Nobody hit nobody, and away this guy runs. Seven and a half hours later, we find him on the far opposite end of town, right in the middle of an apartment complex. Guess what happens there? He shoots the police, the police shoot back at him, this time he's hit and it's over with. But by the grace of God, none of the other 200 people that live in that apartment complex got hurt. The mayor was absolutely furious. He said, this is crazy. If a dog could have stopped us anywhere from point A to point B in the seven and a half hours, we need to get a dog. So he goes to my chief and he tells my chief we're going to get one. Now, do you think my chief was happy? Uh, that's an understatement. He was, he was not thrilled at all. He said, go get that, I won't tell you what he said, go get that paperwork and bring it back in here. And I did. Now, I had a place in California that I could go for school, two places in Texas, one in Hawaii, and a place called Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Oh, I heard that. <coughs> Guess where he sent me to school? Tuscaloosa. You ever been to Tuscaloosa, Alabama? <laughs> Don't go to Tuscaloosa, Alabama. <laughs> It's the darndest place you've ever seen. The crickets are the size of poodles. <laughs> the ants are the size of chihuahuas. It's the craziest thing you've ever seen in your life. But I'm thinking it's December, right? So at least it's going to be warm in Tuscaloosa. And it would have been had he sent me in December. But he waited until May 1st to send me to Tuscaloosa, which is like sending somebody to Ohio in the middle of August. Very hot, very humid, very sticky. And did I mention the bugs? <laughs> So I go to Tuscaloosa, I get our dog, and I come back. Now, after I got back, there was another way to tell if the chief was mad at you. If he assigned you to work the county fair, you knew you were not in good graces with my chief. <laughs> we always used to joke, being he come from West Virginia, that maybe a mule kicked him in the head, or 
A cow looked at him wrong. I don't know, but he didn't like the fair. So if he assigned you to work the fair, you knew he was mad at you about something. Guess who got assigned to work the fair? <laughs> Me and another guy who deserved to get assigned to work the fair. <laughs> he never did anything. So we're both at the fair. The first day, I'm sitting there bored to death. By the second day, I was like, I'm going crazy. So I go to the announcer guy and said, hey, every two hours, announce that Officer Woods has got his brand new police K-9, meet him in the northwest corner of the fairgrounds, he'll do a little show for you. And you know what? The first time, a couple people showed up. I was shocked. The next time, more people showed up. By Thursday, they had me at the grandstands doing this five times a day. Now, the point of this is that somebody enjoyed it, right? Friday morning, guess who comes into the fairgrounds? Uh huh. He wasn't there to get a hot dog or popcorn. I knew he was looking for one of us, and he walked right by the other guy, so he wasn't looking for him. I hid from him like a little girl. It took him an hour and a half to find me. Finally, he got me cornered, and I couldn't run away from him no more. He said, I got to talk to you. I said, Yeah, I kind of figured you did. He said, I just wanted to apologize to you. You were right, and I was wrong. I said, excuse me? He said, Woods, let's not push this. <laughs> he said, when you came to my office, you told me that a police dog would be great public relations for our police department. I thought you'd lost your mind. How is a dog that bites people good public relations? He said, you know, during this fair, normally I get complaint after complaint after complaint. Susie wrote me a parking ticket. People's parking in my yard. The fair is going too late. It's too noisy. Blah, blah, blah. He said, this year I bet you I got 20 phone calls a day how wonderful this damn dog is. He said, you were right and I was wrong. And furthermore, I'm going to support you. <clears throat> Great news for me because I only had three years, four years on at that time. 21 years is a long time to go with no support. Okay? And you know what? Again, he was a man of his word. He did exactly that. But the problem was he supported me too much because we were the only dog in this area at the time. So if anyone had use for a dog... He'd be on the phone and say, I'm sending one, using it. It was great for about the first eight months, but after that, I got a little tired. Working all night long and all day long got a little, little annoying. So he comes to me after about a year, and he says, what do you think about getting another dog for a police department? I thought for a moment, I said, I think that's a great idea, but you are going to send him to the same place you sent me, right? <laughs> he said he would, so I was agreeable. I said, that's fine. Now, when the guy goes down there to get his dog, he comes back, we start noticing a little problems with both his dog and my dog. They just weren't as sharp as they were. And it was getting a little worse. I don't know how else to describe it. They still did what they were trained to do, but they just didn't look the same doing it. Does that make any sense? Yeah. yeah. So it, it's kind of like a car, you know? When it starts making noise, you got to get it to a mechanic, right? But the problem was we didn't have a mechanic. So the chief comes to me and he says, you know, what are we going to do about this? I said, what do you mean, we? I, I can't do anything about it. He said, well, what could we do about it? I said, well, you can either hire somebody from the outside to come in and help us, or you can send one of us to school. And he said, well, what does it cost to send one of you to school? I said, about $12,000. And before he could say anything, I said, whoa, wait, 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 wait. Before you say no, what if we can raise the money? What if we can go to the community and ask them for help? If they, we got $12,000 donated, would you send one of us to school? He looked at me and he laughed at me. He said, Woods, if you can raise $12,000, I'll send you. Should have never said it. <laughs> Literally, I walked across the hall, I got on the phone, I made two phone calls. I called the Moose Club and I called the Eagles Club. Both of them said they'd give me $6,000. The only thing they needed to know was who to write the check to. So on however long it took me to make two phone calls, I raised the money. I go back across the hall and tell the chief, Good news, I got the money. He said, there's no way you raised $12,000 in 10 minutes. I said, Chief, the only thing they want to know is who to write the check to. You tell me that, you'll have the checks today. You ever seen anybody look like their head was going to explode? <laughs> he said, I don't know how you did it, but fine. I told you you could go, and you can go. Now, I'm thinking it's February, right? So I know where he's going to send me. I know it's going to be twice as long I'm going to be there, but again, at least in February, it's warmer than it is in Ohio. And it would have been had he sent me in February. <laughs> this time he waits till June 1st to send me to Tuscaloosa, which means I'm in Tuscaloosa in June and July. I come back in August, and guess who gets assigned to work the fair? 
<laughs> Can't win for losing, right? But I come back with this education, so I have to decide what am I going to do with this? Am I just going to train our two dogs or am I going to train dogs for other people as well? So my wife and I, we made the decision we'll train dogs for other people. We bought this piece of property, it's 12 acres, it was a bean field. We built the house, we built the first kettle. We opened up the business. This was 1992, 1993. The first year, I think we trained two dogs. That's all we trained. The second year, probably twice that many. But since then, we've trained 402 police dogs throughout the United States. Wow. And you all from Michigan, right? Yeah. You're not going to be happy to hear this. <laughs> the only state I don't have dogs in is Michigan. You know why? I don't like Michigan. <laughs> No, that's not the reason. It's partially the reason, but not the entire one. The Michigan State Police train all their dogs for free. They always have for 50 years, so I'm not competing with free, right? So they train their dogs, and I retrain most of them. That's the way it works. But I can't say I don't have any dogs in Michigan that I train from start to finish, okay? But other than that, every, every state in the union, we've got dogs, including Mexico. Yes, when did they start training dogs? dogs? When did they start training dogs for police work? Yeah. Right after World War II. Did they? Yes. When we were in Germany, we saw what the Germans were doing with their dogs, mostly military-wise. When it came back to the United States, they started doing it military-wise, and the law enforcement took off after that. Oh. So it's right after World War II. Now, the next thing we're going to talk about is drug work. And the reason why we're going to talk about drug work is because Everybody has kind of an understanding on the problems that we have with narcotics in these communities, okay? But understand this, we train dogs to do anything a police officer needs the dog to do here. We train the dogs to find cellar, we train them to find bombs, we train them to find cadavers, we train them to find narcotics, we train them to apprehend criminals, building search, area search, article search, officer protection, the whole gamut. But we're going to talk about narcotics today, again, because everybody has kind of an understanding of that anyway. The first thing about teaching a dog to find drugs is to understand that if the dog comes in physical contact with the drug, it will kill it. Did you hear what I said? If it comes in physical contact, it will kill him. So that being said, how in the world can I teach a dog to find drugs? My job's safe, ain't it? Smelling. Smelling. Smelling has to be part of it, right? He has to know what he's looking for. But how do we associate that odor to the dog? I can't just put it underneath his nose and say, hey, Charlie Brown, smell this. And he goes, I'm going to hide it, you find it. He goes, okay, let's go, right? We must have a reward system. We have to have a reward system. What reward system could we use? Food. Food will not work, and I'll tell you why. What if he's not hungry? What motivates him to search? Nothing. Okay? Yes, sir? His favorite toy. His favorite toy. Okay, what are we going to do with his favorite toy? I'm going to pull this out of you if I have to. <laughs> We're going to do what? Reward him with him. How? How are we going to reward him with it? Loving him. Who? Giving him some love. Giving him some love. No, nope, won't work. Associate that smell or drugs. Associate that smell, the odor of drugs, with his toy, right? Okay, how do we do that safely? I can't put odor in a ball, right? See this? It's a piece of thick walled PVC. I'll pass this around, you can look at it. Okay, it's hollow, which means I can put drugs inside of it. <coughs> it's hard so he can't bite through it, and it's got small holes drilled in it which allows the odor to come out. What's the funnest game a dog likes to play? Fetch. Fetch. Okay, so we're going to do what he likes to do. All right, I'm going to put marijuana, cocaine, heroin, and methamphetamine inside this one toy. Okay, I'm going to seal the end shut so it can't come out, and I'm going to throw it. Okay, he runs out there and picks it up. What's he pick it up with? His mouth. If that's in his mouth, what's he breathing out of? His nose. Every time he takes a breath, what's he smelling? Drugs. Drugs. Shazam. We just played the game, didn't we? So he's going to bring it back. We play tug of war. I throw it again. All right. Now, first of all, don't you think we would confuse him by putting four odors inside this toy at one time? 
We would if it was a human, because a human, if you smell a hamburger and it's got a lot of onion on it, what are you going to smell? Onion. onion. That's it, right? His nose doesn't work that way. Depending on who you want to believe, it's anywhere from 200 to 1,000 times more sensitive. Plus, he can actually differentiate between odors. What's that mean? It's a big word. It means he can smell multiple odors individually at the same time. Now, some of you is going to go, that's not possible. I'm going to prove it to you. How many times have you tried to give your dog a pill inside of a hot dog or a piece of cheese? <laughs> what happens? Not the first time, right? The first time he swallows it all, and you go, thank you, Jesus, no more fighting, right? And then the second time, it's, we're fighting again, because he eats the hot dog and spits the pill out on the floor, right? How in the world did he do that? I had a lady tell me, Mr. Woods, it's simple. He saw you put the pill in the hot dog. Think so? No. Anything that goes in, on, or near his mouth, he smells. Okay? Even if it looks like he swallowed it whole, he still smelt it. He learned from the first time that this hot dog is really good, but something's nasty inside of here. And it's in here again. So I'm going to eat the hot dog and spit the pill out on the floor and says, thanks. Can I have another one? Yes, ma'am. I've often wondered, do you know, okay, drugs affect humans' minds. Mm -hmm. Doesn't it affect their minds that if they, they would go nuts? If they ingested it, it surely would. Just from smelling that, it doesn't affect smelling them. Smelling it does not. Oh. does not. So we don't worry. The only thing that we worry about smelling is fentanyl. Yeah. You get, yeah. you get within 10 feet of that stuff, yeah. it seems to attack you. Mm -hmm. that, that scares us. But the regular narcotics smell it. Okay, so that's how we teach him to find the odors. How long do you think it takes to teach him to find four different drugs by playing fetch? Now be reasonable, because it is a dog. How long do you think it takes? Two weeks. Two weeks? A month. A month? Anybody else? About six. Six? Six months. Okay, anybody else? 20 hours. 20 hours? <laughs> He's close. 24 hours, four days. Now think about that. How in the world does he learn four odors just by playing fetch in four days? Well, it's simple. We're doing exactly what he wants to do when he wants to do it. He doesn't even realize he's learning anything, nor does he care. Make sense? He's having fun. That's all he cares about, right? So he will learn very quickly. Even human beings learn things quickly if they want to learn it in the first place. If somebody's making you learn something, on the other hand, it takes forever, right? Okay, so four days to learn what he's looking for. The next thing I have to teach him is to tell me when he finds it. How does he tell me when he finds it? Barks. Barks is always the first answer, but it's wrong. And I'll tell you why. Hold on a minute. If the dog is trained to bark when he finds the odor, what will happen is he'll come into this door, take two steps in, and go, Yep. Whoa, 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 whoa. And I'll look at him and say, That's great, son, but can you kind of narrow it down? I don't need him to come in here and say, You're right. I'm going back to the car now. I need him to come in here and show me where it's at. Barking doesn't encourage that. So we can't use barking. Sitting or laying down. Yes. About, now will hear me, because there's a test. 5% of the dogs are taught to sit. What are the other 95% allowed to do? Run? Oh, no. Lay down. No, lay down is part of sitting. Oh, Wag your tail? Nope, they do that oh, all the time, too. Go in circles? No, nope, you've never seen a Malinois. They go in circles all the time. <laughs> no, barking don't work. Pigs. Scratch and dig. Oh. Cat, isn't that one thing that annoys the heck out of you when your dog gets holes all over the backyard? Okay? He likes to scratch and dig. If he likes to scratch and dig, let's use it. Now, let's talk about the scratching and digging first. How do we associate scratching and digging equals this game of fetch starts? Pick up his ear and say, hey, Charlie Brown, if you scratch, I'll let you play fetch, right? He goes, okay, gotcha. No, bury it, bury it. No, too hard. What's even simpler than that? When we're playing fetch, I take the toy away. I drop it on the ground, and I stand on top of it. He sees the toy, right? The first thing he's going to do is bark. Hey, fat guy, get off the toy. And when he does that, I'm going to ignore him. 
after a very short period of time, he gets mad. And when he gets mad, he starts biting and scratching at my feet. The minute he starts biting and scratching at my feet, I kick the toy. The toy runs away. He picks it up with what? His mouth. mouth. If he's got it in his mouth, what's he breathing out of? His nose. His nose. Every time he takes a breath, what's he smell? The drugs. The drugs. Didn't take him very long to figure out that, did it? <laughs> he associated that very well. How long do you think it takes the dog to learn that? Uh, Scratching and digging equals we play fetch. About the same amount of time as the heat taught. One time. Okay, again, how does he learn it so quickly? It's because it's what he wants to do anyway. We've just showed him the rules. Barking didn't get him nothing. He likes to scratch and dig. So, okay, I'll scratch and dig. Right? What if a dog doesn't scratch and dig? What if he just comes up to me and says, hey, move, get off my toy, get off, move, move, come on, move, come on, get. Okay, that's a dog I know is never going to scratch. He doesn't want to. But he's still very intent on getting the toy, right, possessing the toy. So this is a dog I will teach to sit. So the difference between this dog and the scratching dog is this one is taught, which means money. Okay, that's time. Time is money. The allowing of the dog to scratch cost me how much? <clears throat> Zero. Right? He did it right away. So that's why 95% of the dogs scratch and dig and 5% of the dogs sit. Money. Make sense? What do you mean by dig? Is it usually on the ground or what about time? Nope. It's, if it's on, you'll see when we do a little demonstration with the dog, he doesn't care where it is. He'll scratch and dig oh. like he's trying to dig it out. He's daring the bunny rabbit to stick his head out of the hole is what he's doing. You'll see it in a minute. Okay? The last thing I have to teach him is the harvest. This is where we start button heads. <coughs> you got any water back there? He has to learn to work with us. Why? Why do we care? Why couldn't I just turn him loose in here and say, hey, Charlie Brown, when you find it, let me know? I could, couldn't I? Sure I could. But why can't I? You remember our conversation in the beginning of this? He has to build trust. He has to build trust. Thank you. It has nothing to do with trust. I'm his handler. I'm his handler. He loves me a lot, but no. We don't want to kill him. If he's by himself back there in the corner and he scratches and digs at a drawer, what's likely the drawer to do? It's likely to open up. Do drug dealers package their narcotics and save things for my dog to play with, like pipes? No. 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 What do they package it in? Ah! You don't know the answer to that question. <laughs> so I'll tell you, it's plastic bags. Okay? Does it take much for the dog to bite through a plastic bag? No. no. So if I'm standing over here watching him, he's going to be in that plastic bag before I can do anything. He's going to come out with white powder all over his head and he's going to die. Doesn't make a whole lot of sense to buy the dog, train the dog, to kill the dog the first time we use him. Right? So he has to learn to work with me. My job is to do a safe and thorough search. His job is to stick his nose there and say, yes, daddy, it's there, or no, daddy, it's not. Okay, this is very much a team sport. It's not an individual marathon. Make sense? Yep. Okay, questions? Do the dogs live with you? Do the dogs live with us? Yes, 99% of the police dogs stay at home with the handler, with their family. How long do they stay here? How long do they stay here? We get the dogs, we pre-train the dogs, me and my staff, for six to eight weeks. Okay. Then the handler shows up, he's here for six weeks. So the dog's getting 12 to 14 weeks worth of training, the handler's getting six. At the end of that time, they certify together. If they pass the certification, all's well, they take the dog home. If they don't pass the certification, they go home, the dog stays here, someone else comes to work the dog. Does that happen very often? It does not happen very often. Usually that, that person, really yeah, usually I can tell within the first couple of days whether the guy needs to be here or not. Believe it or not, I have no pick on who the department sends me. Yeah, really so I don't know this guy from Adam or girl from Adam. So they show up here, I've had a couple of them scared to death of dogs, if you can believe that. <laughs> Why would you send an officer to police dog training and him be afraid of drugs or dogs? 
I mean, seriously. He was like this, trying to take the leash. I'm like, go home. Just go. This, you're not going to get over this. Go home. You know, when he passes the test, mm -hmm. takes the dog with him then? Right? Yes. To, it yeah, could be 50 it. states. Correct. When he passes the test, he takes the dog home. Okay? If he lives in the state of Washington, he's at home. Now, part of our contract is he's allowed to come back one a week a year for free that we can maintain the dog and keep his certifications up to date. But to be honest with you, only about 20% of them take advantage of that. Most of them I never see again. I may talk to them on the phone, but I never see them again. That's about all the feedback you get then is you get home? Well, the feedback I get is more business. If I didn't get any more business, I know something was wrong, right? But usually when they take a dog home and that's the first dog in their area, I get calls from other people in their area. Just like in Montana, around the city of Billings, Montana, I've got 27 dogs. Okay? It's just about every dog in the state's mine. And how did that happen? Because I trained two dogs for Billings. They saw the dogs, they liked the dogs that I trained, so they called and they got dogs. And then they got dogs. So word of mouth, very much so. country will not touch, look at, or have anything to do with a female dog. About 105% in foreign countries will not touch, look at, or have anything to do with a female dog. You know why? Because they're stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Hey, it's not, it's not, no, they're not, the dog's not stupid, the trainers are. Why do I care what plumbing the dog's got, right? If the dog will play fetch, I can make it every bit as good a police dog as a male. It doesn't make any difference to me. But I will tell you there's two differences beside the obvious between a male and a female. If you bring a female into this barn, she's going to come in, stop, and take a look. See what's going on. Then she will come in and greet you. A male, on the other hand, will hit that door at 105 miles an hour, run in here at 126 miles an hour, <laughs> jump on top of your head and say, Hey! Do you realize the barn's on fire? <laughs> Who's the smarter dog? The female. At least she stopped to see what was going on before she got in, right? But this is going to shock you. I don't want a smart dog. I don't. I don't want a dog that's going to be smarter than the handler, A, and I don't want a dog that's going to be smart, period. Because that dog's going to call a timeout one day. Right. You know what I mean by that? Bullets are flying, he's going to look at you and go, you know what, I don't want to be here, I'm going back to the car, I can get hurt. I want a dog that's going to do exactly what he's told to do when he's told to do it. So if I can dummy her up a little bit, I can make her every bit of good police dog as a male. Okay? The other problem with the female is she comes in the heat. And oftentimes when she comes in the heat, her personality totally changes. She can get lethargic, she can get... Quiet, irritable. She can, she can demand flowers. Oh, wait, oh, that's my wife. <laughs> but you know the point. The point is, you get her fixed, you don't have the problem. See why I wanted to avoid this conversation? <laughs> it was a very good question. Okay, yes, ma'am. What about a breed? We are not breed specific. I always tell people if I had a chihuahua that loved to play fetch, I could teach the chihuahua to find anything. Oh, because we have beagles in right. Detroit. Yeah, yep. Well, and again, a, a, take a chihuahua for instance. A chihuahua would be a great dog to search luggage and search buses and stuff, airplanes. The dog could go anywhere in there, yeah. right? You get a big, great big German Shepherd, he beats himself to death trying to search that thing, right? But the only problem with the chihuahua is if I've got a dual purpose dog and he's going to apprehend criminals, can you imagine? Police officer, stop or I'll send my dog. I got two of them. See, not exactly intimidating, right? So size matters more than breed matters. As long as the dog plays fetch, I can do anything I want to with it. So that being said, usually it's retrievers and herders, not chihuahuas. 
But again, if I found one, I could do it. What about the other areas that the search dogs and all that? How does that training come in? That training is the exact same training as the drugs. Okay. The only thing different is what we put in the pipe. So the one dog can be trained to do all the he, he cannot. One oh. dog can be trained one scent work. He can be trained either bomb or drugs or cadaver oh, okay. or accelerant. Oh, but part of that is he can any one of those four can be trained in criminal apprehension, article search, be, uh, building search, criminal, you know, all the rest of the patrol stuff. Mm -hmm. so we call that a dual purpose dog. He actually does about 11 things, but he only does one scent job. Okay, otherwise it's too confusing for him. Yeah. Yes. Is there any breed, like the hounds or, um, that they're sent, or they're better at hunting or finding something if you're doing a search? The problem is, is all dogs are bred for a specific job. Okay? So the dog, dog you're talking about would be like a, what's um, mm -hmm. got the big nose? The hound dog. Basset? Uh, Basset? Huh? Basset? 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 No, the oh, tracking dog, the Hoover Blood Sweeper. Hound. Bloodhound. The Bloodhound makes a great tracking dog because he's got such a strong nose. He, he can His scent work is much better than a German Shepherd. But the problem is he's not driven, drive driven to do the same things that a German Shepherd will do. In other words, he's pretty much a tracker and that's all he does. You're not going to teach him to African criminals. You're not going to teach him to search buildings. He can care less about any of that. All he cares about is tracking. So he won't work. You follow me? Yeah. He's just not drive driven. He's not bred to do that. How young are they when you start training them? We like them to be about a year, year and a half old. No more than two and a half, two. Okay? okay? Because we got to look at time frame. How many years are we going to get out of them? Right? Okay. Generally, the dog retires about 9, 10, 11. Depends on what his job was. Mm -hmm. So we got to get some years out of it. And so if we train a five year old, that's the problem. That's why we don't train too many female dogs. I love them. I love them. I think they're great. But only, we've only trained maybe 10, 12 because they're using them for breeding until they're five years, six years old, and they're too yeah. old for me at that point. So I don't get too many females. You might have covered this. Where do you get, get your dogs in? Okay. How do you determine uh, how many dogs you want? Is it based upon uh, requests or purchase? Okay, let's start off with where we get our dogs. <coughs> it's a long answer, but here we go. Everybody in here knows what AKC is, right? right. Yeah. What is AKC's role in life? I ain't heard it yet. Nope, it's not show dogs. It's not sell dogs. To keep what? Breed them. Not to breed them, not to keep track of them, to keep the breed pure. That's AKC's rule in life, okay? To keep the breeds pure. Well, AKC has flat destroyed every breed of dog it's ever touched. Not harmed them, destroyed them. That's a pretty brash statement to make, isn't it? Well, let me prove it to you. In the Westminster Dog Show, anybody in here not seen a dog show in their life? When they bring a herding group out on stage, do they bring any sheep, goats, <laughs> cattle, people, children, ducks, geese, anything for the dog to herd? No. No. All they base it upon, they're going to make the world grand champion in the herding group, is this. Ain't I pretty? <laughs> they don't herd nothing. How in the world can you make the grand champion of the world in the herding class and not have any idea whether it herds. The retrievers, do they bring anything for the dogs to retrieve to prove that they could retrieve? No. Thank you, AKC, you've done a hell of a job. Okay, the poodle. Do you know what the poodle's supposed to do? No. The poodle, huh? Strong swimmer. Strong swimmer, very strong swimmer. He has an oily curly coat to break ice and retrieve ducks. He's a hunting dog. Can you imagine? The duck is bigger than the poodle. Right? Right? If it's 50 degrees, we got to put a sweater on the poodle because he'll catch his death of cold. Thank you, AKC, again. Heck of a job. So that being said, do you think I get too many dogs from AKC? No. No, I've got zero dogs from AKC. 
Shelters. Okay. Shelters, dog work, pounds, blah, blah, blah. You're saving the dog's life, for goodness sakes. But the problem with them, I found six, incidentally, six or seven from a shelter or the dog pound. That's it out of the 402. Why? Why so horrible? It's because their mommy and daddy two generations ago were what? AKC dogs. Oh. Susie's Doberman got out and bred with Tommy's German Shepherd. They had god awful ugly puppies. Right? <laughs> they were the great great grandparents of this puppy. So if these dogs wouldn't retrieve or wouldn't hurt because it's been bred out of them, what makes you think it's going to come back down here? It's not. It's all genetics. Okay, so I don't find too many there either. But believe me, I look, they're 50 bucks. We go to Europe to get our dogs. These dogs cost me between $8,000 and $9,000 for a dog. Wow. Believe me, I look for the $50 dogs every day. <laughs> okay? If they would work, I would buy them. But they won't work. Why Europe? Why, why do they do so much things better in Europe? It's because they're poor. It's just like here during the Great Depression. If you had a dog on the farm, if your mom and dad had a dog on the farm, he earned his keep. If he didn't earn his keep, he was buried out back behind the barn. They didn't have enough food, money, or time to be messing with a pet that laid on the couch. Right? right. It's pretty hard to have puppies if you're buried behind the barn. So the only dogs that got bred were working dogs, and that's the way it is over there. They're poor. Okay, so they don't have just dogs for pets and couch potatoes. The dog works. So we can still find retrievers over there that, you know what? Retrieve. It's amazing. Herders. What's a herder, incidentally? Right? He's a retriever less to pick up the cow. Right? He still brings the cow to you. Right? He just doesn't pick it up. Well, he can pick up the pipe, so he'll play with the pipe. Right? They're still bred to work, and that's why we go to Europe to get these things. Guy, you have now, you say poor, get from a certain place because they got We do not get them from a certain place $3, because. $3,000, that ain't poor no more. Well, <laughs> it's called the middleman. It's called the middleman. Okay. In, in Germany and in Holland, they have. You ever see a chicken ranch? This is where I used to go before I got the relationship with the guy I buy dogs from now. He owns it like a chicken ranch. But instead of chickens, it's dogs. Oh, yeah. Building after building after building with nothing but dogs in it, right? Okay, the reason for that is that they get a disease in one building that doesn't kill all of them. But when I went over there to pick dogs, he may have three, four hundred dogs there. And I went through three, four hundred dogs, or however many I could go through, until I picked the ones I wanted. How do I tell which ones I wanted? If the dog will play fetch until he would drop down dead, if I didn't take the toy away from him and put him in the kennel, I'll take him. It's just that simple. It's not Albert Einstein work. Okay? But if he goes out two, three times, picks up the toy, brings it back, then drops the toy and goes and pees on trees, <laughs> he's done. He's done. I don't want him. Even though he did it great five times. Okay? Yes, sir. So you actually select the dogs over there. They don't just send them to you. I used to. I went over there several years and selected dogs until me and one of the brokers over there formed a relationship. He's actually been to my house. I've stayed at his house when I went over there. So I call him on the phone now and say, hey, Gerard, I need seven dogs. He says, okay. I go to Detroit. I pick up the seven dogs. I bring them home. I got one week to look at them. Oh. And during that week, I play fetch with them, and I take them to the vet. And if they pass the vet and they play fetch, I'll call him on the phone and say, what do I owe you? And I'll send him a check. If they don't play fetch or they don't check out with the vet, I call him on the phone and say, where do you want this dog to go? I don't want him. He'll say, send it to Detroit, send it to El Paso, send it wherever. And I'll take it back up to Detroit, put it on a plane, and it'll go someplace else for them to look at. Because my standards aren't the same as everybody's standards. So they may take the dog, even though I don't want it. Well, what percentage of the dog do you usually keep? From him, percent. probably 95%. Oh, wow. What country? Very good. Have? What country? Yeah. They come from all countries. Oh, uh, Gerard. Where's Gerard is in Holland. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Okay, give me a dog. You want to come up and tell about your dog a little bit first? Okay, what I want you to watch when these guys bring their dogs in is I want you to watch how the handler searches with the dog. Okay? 
In other words, again, his job is to present the areas the dog should search. The dog's job is to say yes or no. Okay, make sure you tell them what indication your dog is. My name is Gary Schling. I'm a new handler at the model county, just one county kind of north here up on the lake. I have canine cash. We've been on the road now a little over a year. I went to Brian's school last year. So we're still working out the kinks. He is full of energy. He's only about two and a half. It'll be three in April. And uh, he's a Belgian Malinois German Shepherd mix. Check this about His name is, like I said, is Cash. He is a passive indicating dog, so you will see him sit when he gets an odor of narcotics. So, you guys have any questions for me before I get him? How long have you been working with him? One year. About one year. Yep. Okay, so we're still new, and neither of us have been to bed. We work night shift and came right here, so <laughs> bear with us a little bit. <laughs> what? He, how old? Yes. About two and a half. It'll be three in this April. Come on. Sorry. Yes, ma'am. Okay, vest, bulletproof vest. I got kind of a weird idea on bulletproof vest, okay? It stems from me. When I was on the job, our vests were made out of plastic and Kevlar inside the plastic. You ever wrap yourself in saran wrap and go stand in the sun? Yeah. Okay, I didn't wear a vest in my career. The only time I put on a vest is both were flying and I could get to one. Honestly. It was so hot, I couldn't wear it. So, I learned from that experience. I believe that a dog, if you're going to get a vest on a dog, the dog wears the vest 24-7 when he's working. Okay, you do not take it, take, put it on, take it off, put it on, take it off. Because the reason for that is if you do that, you put that vest on and instantly the dog is more concerned about what the heck is on his back and why is he so hot than paying attention to what's going on out here. You follow? So, yeah. Well, it's not so much they're heavy anymore, it's just hot. He looks just like a mouse. That's that's a mouse. He acts just like a Malinois too. It's crazy. You see how he's following? Hey now look, see how he's staring at that hole? He doesn't care what daddy's doing. The reason why he's doing that is because he's waiting for that toy to jump out of the hole. It just did. Okay, the dog doesn't call a timeout and say, wait a minute, that didn't happen. He doesn't care. It always has come out, it will come out, Shazam, it came out. We do not use hand signals very much because most of us work in the night. So mostly it's hand, or our voice commands. <laughs> yeah, he would train to hold it till I tell him to let go. Oh, you have a phone to let go? No, he can play with it. It's kind of his reward. He just worked hard to find that. Where does his dog sleep? At the foot of his bed. He'll show you. No. You want to explain that we don't use drugs in every toy? Okay. The dog believes when he smells the odor and the toy comes out, it's the odor. Okay? Because that toy can change. That could be a piece of fire hose, be a piece of PVC, it could be a piece of hose, it could be a boot. It doesn't matter. If it jumps out, it's the drug. Right? And he thinks he's playing with the drug. He doesn't call a timeout and go, wait a minute, this pipe don't smell like drug no more. <laughs> he don't care. He's got it in his mouth, he's playing with it. You follow? Yeah. yeah. What'd you say? He's a German ship of Belgium Malmont. Why is he not interested in other people around him? It's because right there is what he's interested in. Playing with that toy and daddy. Yeah. He doesn't care. He doesn't care what else is going on. This is what I want to do. Okay. Come on, youngster. I'm 
Jonah Boyer. I Jonah's my here. youngest son. Yeah. <laughs> I work in Ottawa County, same with Cash and Garrett. So I'm actually in training right now with this dog that I'll bring out. His name is Diesel. Um, I've been at training for about three weeks now, so I'm still learning everything. So he is He's a, praying to God he doesn't screw up. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> so, uh, so I have a black German Shepherd. Um, he's about six years old, so I'm actually the third handler for this dog. We have had prior handlers with him that resigned from the sheriff's office, so I took the role of this dog. So, so. Is that very difficult is for the dog to adjust? No. Okay. Since about the first week, he loves me now, so okay. I feel so like he just catches on. I mean, that's we, we have a process for that. We bring the dog here and we isolate him. Basically, for two, three weeks, nobody touches him. We feed him, we clean his kennel, we don't talk to him, we don't touch him, we don't pet him, we isolate him. Okay? So then the handler shows up, and when the handler shows up, he's the only one that feeds him, pets him, gets him out, plays with him, touches him. It doesn't take him very long to figure out your daddy, okay? So that's how we disassociate the old handler. Now, when he goes back to that department, if he would walk by that other officer, you'd see the dog go like this, hey. <laughs> <laughs> now, why is that? It's because the dogs don't love you. They like you a lot, but they don't love you, right? If they loved you, they would never go to the neighbors. Okay, the neighbor's obviously giving him something you're not giving him, so he'll go see the neighbor during the day. Right? He's a very self gratifying critter that gets along well with humans, because we do love him, but he don't love you. He likes you a lot, that's all you can. Can you explain how he got into the release from his mouth? You're going to see it here. And it's not going to be very pretty, but you'll see it. Because I'm going to make it. We don't give them treats. The treat is that toy. Yeah. That's the treat. Yeah. Very seldom. I mean, for obedience work, maybe we'll give them treats. But other than that, no, the treat is me. Attention from me. Yes. Yes. No, it's because, see, the box is on the walls. We use this room for training. So he's making sure it ain't there because it's been there before. So, so why, why, why beat my head against the wall when it's right here? I'm going to check it. That's why he went right there. Yeah. Okay, I believe what in the firm 
but fair method of training a dog. In other words, when I tell him to do something, I expect him to do it. If he doesn't do it, he gets disciplined. If he does do it, he gets praised. Okay? It's no different than raising children. If everybody used that idea of raising children, we'd have a lot better world right now. Okay? Yeah. The dog doesn't like discipline at the time you're giving it to him, but he likes discipline because in his mind he's calm. Right? He knows what's right and what's wrong. Okay? So he knows because of two things, the new handler, he knew the new handler wasn't going to make him give that toy up in front of you, okay, because it wasn't going to be easy, all right, so he didn't want to embarrass himself, and the dog seen all you all out here, and he's like, he ain't going to make me, <laughs> that's why I said, ah, 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 get back in here, I'll make him, he will let go, again, he has to learn. All right, and that's what the kid's here for. He's here to learn. So yeah. it's up to us to teach him. Yes, sir. Now, when you're with the dog, with the dog, and he finds it, like, he finds mm -hmm. that hole, you throw him something so he can get it, and then you... In the real world, he did exactly what this guy did. And then after he leaves, you fight. You that's fight. right. Okay. If I see him, I'm here to back him up, right? And I see the dog indicate there, he gets his toy, he takes the dog off and plays, I'm going to tear this apart and look. I don't need the dog to open this up for me to look in there, right? Same way with the drawer scenario on the back. If the drawer opens up, I'm going to give the dog a reward real quickly and move on. Go play with the dog. Somebody else can look in that drawer. I don't need the dog to pick it up and say, here it is. We'll kill him. Yes, ma'am. What if there's drugs in more than one location and you've already given him the toy? Is we take the toy away we start searching again. Okay. Okay. He can do this 40 times. Oh, okay. He, the toy is a paycheck, okay? You know what I mean by that? Just like your paycheck. At the end of the week, you get a paycheck, right? And if it's supposed to be $1,000, it better be $1,000, right? If it's not $1,000, you're gonna find out why it's not $1,000. If this happens to you two or three times in a row, you're looking for a new job, right? Well, this is the only paycheck that dog gets, is playing with me and daddy. Okay, so if that paycheck's not on time, and it's not in the proper amount, he's quitting. He will literally quit. No, I don't want to do this no more. It's not fun. <coughs> I can't make him do this job. He has to want to. This makes any sense or not? Yeah. yeah. He must want to do this. So believe me, that paycheck, we even throw in bonuses. But if he only works for two minutes, he only played with him for a minute. Right? If he works for an hour and makes one fine, I may play with him for 20 minutes. Until if I kept playing with him, he'd pass out. You follow? Yeah. The more he works, the more he plays. Yeah. And that's what motivates him to work. Now, what, yeah. is, what is that in that hole or in that? Now, if, yeah. if there is a snow, <laughs> Black tar hair. Oh. Can I, got one more dog or not? can I ask you a question? Yes, ma'am. I know the dogs are trained, you know, they have a purpose. But why is it like at airports or anywhere you go, you cannot pet the dog? They don't want you to get their to the dog. Okay, her question was, she realizes that dogs have a purpose and they're trained. But why can't, like at an airport, you pet the dog? Why, why won't they ever let you pet the dog? Because the dog's working. And honestly, they don't want the liability. All right? And you wouldn't do this, but let's say I'm a drug courier. Okay, I put this thing in my pocket, right? I go up and I intentionally pet the dog, and the dog bites at my pants. Ow, oh, he bit me! He bit me! Now, not only am I going to sue you, but I'm going to walk out with the heroin, and you're not going to do anything about it. You follow me? When the dog's working, it's working. You can always ask, can I pet your dog? But I'll tell you, if you see a dog running loose at the airport, do not wish for the dog to come up to you. Okay? Because right behind the dog is going to be 16 gorillas that weigh 250 pounds, and they will jump all over you. Okay? So, shoot! Go someplace else. You're cute, but I don't want to touch you. All right? You got one more? Go ahead. We got one more dog to show you. You're going to tell them about your dog for a short time. I'm a chihuahua. 
He does too, it's a little dog. Uh, my name is George Dorsey, I work with the Sandusky County Sheriff's Office, that is the county you're in right now. We do have three dogs at our Sheriff's Office. Uh, my dog, I've been with, working on the road for a little over three years. Uh, he just turned four uh, this year. So um, he is a Sable Shepherd, he's from Czech Republic. He is a dual purpose dog, which is uh, narcotics with all the tracking and just the same thing as all these other dogs do. Um, criminal apprehension, handler protection. And that's another reason too why we don't allow people to pet the dog because of the handle protection issue. They, the dog don't know if you're a good person, bad person, if you're trying to harm me. Um, <clears throat> uh, unique thing about my dog is our, our local DFW, Post 2947, um, give us the money, donated the money to purchase our dog and a lot of our equipment that goes with the, the cruisers. Um, so I went to them and asked them to name the dog. They named him Hayes after President Hayes, who resided in Sedusky County. And I, I asked you to submit a medal of honor, medal of honor in, the, in, the, in the military. So um, that, that's uh, where he came from and how I how I obtained him. So I will get A's and see what we can do. Yes. How do you teach them anything? They're so stubborn. I had one cheat. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta be more stubborn than that. Yeah. <laughs> you gotta be more stubborn than that dog. You gotta win the war. <laughs> you gotta fight the battle. Win hey, the war. I had to deal with it for a long time. Then the dog was easy. <laughs> that's close to us. We got the turnpike, we got uh, State Route 53, State Route 6. These are all courier routes. I mean, if you're going to take drugs from Texas to Maine, you're going to come by us. So it's not only our local guys that we're getting, it's the, the courier. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> indicators. You're going to get a guy that doesn't know where he's going, doesn't know where he's been, nervous. is very nervous. His car looks like somebody slept in it for three days because they probably have. Gotcha. Just confused. Just How many air fresheners do I keep in a car? <laughs> <laughs> when the guy's got seven or eight of them scattered in the car, that's usually a lot. Yeah, yeah I mean, it's, it's, all, it's all your training. I mean, you see this all the time, so your radar just goes dee 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 dee. You mean like at a traffic stop, for yep. example. Yes. And yes. then you say, oh, right. there's more to it. That's where it all it's not like he drives by and I go dee 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 dee. I don't know. I mean, it starts with traffic stops. Yes. Okay, okay. If, you're, if you're going 50 and a 65, that's a big clue yeah. to me. Yeah. Okay? Or if you're yeah. going 80 and 65, right. another yeah. big clue. You're going to get stopped. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. From that point on, we'll decide what we're doing with you, but. That's really sad though, it's so common. It's happened so often. I was going to tell them the one difference between the two dogs that you've seen and my dog is my dog was scratching the egg, not sitting. Oh, okay. So just, when he starts doing that, you'll know why. All right. <laughs> Wait till you see this dog. He's <laughs> he, he can only search these holes right here. That's all the water he can go. It's a tiny dog. Yeah. <laughs> he said, go real. What happened to him? Yeah, that's what I thought. Did you watch that dog yeah, last night? Like, <laughs> he must have put him in the dryer. Yeah. I don't understand. <laughs> what happened, Brutus? What happened? Hayes, what happened? That 12. Most of them. Yeah, he released it from breakfast. And the other one's just right in the chain. Watch what he's doing, and I'll explain this in a second. Yeah, 
The door's open, right? You feel the draft coming in here? Uh, yeah. This is one of the more experienced dogs. Yeah. So what he did is he picked up the owner down here. Yeah. Right? And he's like, Dad, get out of my way. He's like, it's down there, right? Yeah. And when he let him go, where'd he go? He goes down here, I'm in order, I'm in order, and bang, it's right here. Oh, yes, ma'am. Mostly. Not at home, but at the yeah, other what happens when I tell him the GB? <laughs> this, is, this, is, this, is, this is what it will kind of look like, right? <laughs> 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 oh, 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 oh. Hey, it's on his back. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> we used to make the bus drivers get in the suit, but my insurance told me knock it off. No. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I'm not a bus driver. <laughs> Just for, for the purpose of him not wanting to smell like fire hose or plastic or whatever. Go ahead and put it in the table. A 
Okay, what, how do we train a tracking dog? There's two ways to do that. You can do it scent specific, which means if you ever watch Ren Tin Tin, they put a sock under Ren Tin Tin's nose and say, find him, Renny. And Ren Tin Tin tracks him and finds him. We don't do that, okay? Some people do, but it takes a lot, a lot of time, a lot, a lot of training. We train the dogs to find human odor. Any human odor, not scent bite. specific. Hmm? You been a dead body? If the body has been dead for a short period of time, our dogs will still find him. If, if the gas is, a, he's already started to blow up, the dog won't find him because now he smells like something else. Yeah, it is. Now it'd be, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's something that piques your curiosity because in the beginning it smells really sweet. <laughs> then not so yeah, much after a while. Food, right? Yeah. So they're usually looking for dead, dead people. No, usually we're looking for live people. A majority of our tracking is either after a criminal or after someone who's uh, walked away from a senior citizen's home, he's got Alzheimer's, a uh, handicapped child, a uh, runaway child. I mean, that's what that lab's for. Because that lab's not intimidating. If he tracks a child, the child's going to be excited about seeing the dog. If, if the child sees a great big German Shepherd, his ugly dog, she's going to be horrified. Yeah. Especially with him at the end of the week. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta get him. I gotta get him when I can. I, I have to. Hey, leave him in the car. <laughs> How do we match the handler with the dog? I hand the dog to the handler and says, "Here's your new best friend." <laughs> Serious? It's his problem to match himself to the dog, and the dog will accept anybody as long as you're good to him. And he's going to be good to it. I've got a question, not a question, but I was wondering, would you mind sharing one of your best finds with uh, Ace? I love stories. I don't know about you guys. But oh. stories. Um, I think you're referring to the one, uh, two weeks out of the class, uh, we had a guy run from the Highway Patrol vehicle pursuit. Uh, the guy then fled on foot. My cousin was also a canine handler for the county. Got called out to do a track. He's tracking. His dog got a little tired. He calls me up. And just about three hours later, I responded to take over the track. What we do typically is we we kind of leapfrog the dogs when they get tired. We get another dog out. Well, then my dog started tracking, and mind you, it's two weeks out of class. He tracked to an airport, and then finally indicated on the roof of the airport the hangars where the guy had climbed up there and was hiding up there. Wow. So we found him on the roof of an airport about wow. three hours later. Wow. wow. That was, uh, I had a question. For you. Yes. I want to know how many times your dog takes you down. Is he <laughs> yeah. wrong? He, uh, That's he, why I don't work in. He, he hasn't, other than there's been times where I'll play fetch and when he comes back he'll jump and, and or just run right into your legs. And <laughs> he doesn't jump, he jumps into you. <laughs> Boom! I but I wait for it, so I'm for it. Oh my gosh. He, one, one time we had, a, we had a bus tour coming in and George wasn't going to be able to come out and work his dog for the people. So I said, bring your dog out, I'll work him. I'm doing that again. That dog, you can see how he spun the dog around? Well, that dog was spinning me around. <laughs> Enough! Quit! Quit! Yes. Yeah, now they're not old like me. <laughs> Chains around the neck, mm -hmm. does that hurt them? When you pull at it? Does it hurt him? No, it's, it's a correction. The, the, the chain I have on his neck yeah. is, is a prong collar, which simulates the mother in the wild saying no. You know, it's not like a, if you really yank hard, yeah, you could probably do some damage, but I don't. I give him a quick pop. That's just a little, breaks his little mind, his little hood loop in his head. It says, ooh, I, gotta do, I better do something, because if not, it's going to keep getting a little bit worse, a little bit worse till he doesn't comply with what I think it is. Because the same thing is in the wild. It's, it's, it's what the mom does to correct yeah. the puppy. So when you're doing this what? fetching, uh, you mentioned they come back to you and jump on you or whatever. Well, he, he can sometimes. Mm -hmm. I allow him to do that because it's play for him. It's his reward. Now, he wouldn't come up and jump on you. He, to me, he'll come up with his toy, jump, want me to grab the toy and play tug of war. So that's what he does. Yeah, he don't just come up and jump all over the crazy like that. And that's not really a whole lot. He has done it in the past is what I was saying. And okay. that has almost knocked me down. That's yeah. the basics of fetching? No, I'm yes. just rewarded. I'm trying to make this fun for him so that way he does what, you know, he already did a job to get his toy and to play that fetch game. So I want to make it fun, 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 fun. That way when he comes back out, I'm going to find what I got to find so I get my toy so I can have fun. See what I'm saying? It's like, yeah. you know, you get your chores done and then you get to go to the fair. 
you know, when you were a kid. You got your chores done right away that week because it's fair week, so that way I can go to the fair. That's kind of like his mentality. I'm going to find this, I'm going to get my reward, I'm going to get my toy, then I can go play. It's like, keep it fun. He had a question first. Go ahead, sir. Uh, I was just wondering uh, exactly what is the drug that the dogs have all been attracted to? Black tar heroin. What is it? Black tar heroin. Yeah. That's oh, black heroin. tar heroin. Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah. One of those Nasty more stuff. common types. Black tar is not as common not as normal heroin. It had a short span. Normal heroin's powder. Not for a bit. This, okay. is, this is like almost like a. Honestly, it's hard to find heroin nowadays all the time. Oh, I see. A lot of times these people that are here on that, it's all you can spy it, it won't hurt it up. It's not like that time you've been around, so it's hard to find. Okay. We'll probably get all the roaches in the bathrooms and all the gas stations. I'm going to take three car, and stuff like that. Because they get it. What's this called, Brian? Kind of like a vinegar. for the dogs to area so it's not like a sea slippery you know it's actually a mat they can lay down and it's kind of like a roll cage in a, in a race car to where it, it, you get in a crash it'll kind of protect the dog a little bit there's also we have heat sensors in there um, which will if the car gets too hot say the air conditioner breaks the motor stalls whatever the, the alarm will go off the rear windows will roll down and they have fans that kick on to keep the dog warm and, and like I said the, the car will go Lights and sirens, some of them honk, they say, hey, go get your dog out of the car, it's getting a little warm in here. So it's just, because you know, the dogs are in the car a lot while we're, you know, we may not, we may be handling a domestic situation, which we don't use the dog. So he's going to stay in the car until we need him. So what would that cost? Oh, uh, that's what we're well, doing nowadays. The cage itself is usually about three grand and then all the electronics. Oh, right. So you need him to call? To get donations? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll do it on your way out. I'll get my uh, cash back out. And you guys can just walk by my car. And look okay. It's pretty unique. It's pretty safe. How, do you, how does the job know, okay, now you're out duty? He just gets used to it. He right? punches the time clock. <laughs> 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 
this is like Disneyland to the dogs because they train here. We come here frequently oh, to train. I turn the corner down here, and that dog will absolutely nuts, bonkers in the back of my car because he knows we're gonna go play all day today. We're gonna do this. We're gonna do that, and he knows. And he's done these demos enough to where he. But he does that and any day on the street when you get them out. They know. They see the lights going, they see the car pull over, they know they get they get a work time. My dog knows he starts whining when I put the light switch on. The light switch makes a little beep when I turn my little red on. They start whining in the back. They know they're going through something. Oh yes. You'll hear other mine doesn't do the thing, God. You'll hear some dogs when their handler goes to pick up the dog on the mic, they start barking. That first one did that. <laughs> Very annoying. <laughs> <laughs> are the dogs in your car all the time? No. Well, at work, yes. While we're working. At home, we go in our, wherever, how we ever set up some yeah. stand -up. Are there quite a few days where you don't use them? There are some days. There are some days. But we get them out, and, you know, they have, obviously have to go to the bathroom, stretch. You know, and what we do, like, on a real slow winter night or something that where we're not very busy, Sunday night, maybe we'll, we'll go out and throw some articles out in the field and let the dog go find them. We'll train them during shift just to get them out to work and do whatever. But we'll have another guy set a track for us and we'll go out on the track just, just to keep them going. What else you do with fun? What, what's that? What else you do for fun with it? For fun with the dogs? What else we I do? Mean, when you get home, what do you do? Just sit there and feed a popcorn? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, that's going to be something like a family wheel, family family. Well, it is, but he's like a very hyperactive child. So, um, like if I have two days off in a row or three days, which is very, very rare, I actually put him in the car and we go to the fairgrounds. I live close to that big field. Yeah, and I take right. him out and let him let him find something and play fetch to wear him out and bring him back home. But I try not to do any commands at home. The family does not give him any work of my work commands. We try to make him the best house dog we can for the circumstances. But we have to have the dog a little on the crazy side to do what we want them to do. So, yeah. when, when you have them working, like, let's say the airport or whatever, when do they get tired? Do you know when they get tired? Or, or is it so she long? wants to know how, how can we tell when the dog gets tired it's time to put them up. Usually they start panting heavy and their tongues hang out. Oh. And you know, after a little while of working, you can kind of tell. We did a jail search uh, yesterday. It's very hot in there and stagnant. There's a lot of cells to search. I could tell the dog was getting hot, so I removed him, put him in the air conditioner, gave him some water, we waited a little bit, we went back and continued the search. But we also had three dogs doing it, so we could, you know, a little less taxing on the dog. You just gotta watch your dog. Okay. Do you teach your family your commands so that they don't get tired and they something that they should have? She wants to know if I teach my family the commands that I use on the street so they don't inadvertently say something that would uh, have the dog react in a probably a not so good way. No, I do not. Um, what we, I talk to my dog in German and uh, Dutch, so I know my family don't know any of that. <laughs> uh, hey, and being, he, he won't listen anyways to them when it comes to that, so no. Why do you use those languages? Just for the dog? Or did, we, or did you have to do, uh, know those languages so he asked, why, why do we use a foreign language? A, um, I don't know German or Dutch. I know a couple words, and I probably don't even say them right. But he understands them, okay? Uh, when we get the dogs, we, 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 he tries every command possible, Dutch, Czech, German, so on and so forth. And if the dog responds to it, that's what we, we use for that dog. Uh, because if they had some sort of training where they came from, he always says, why, why reinvent the wheel? Um, the other thing, which is the biggest thing why we use it, a lot of people think it's so no one else can give my dog a command. Well, kind of, but he's probably not going to listen to you anyways. It's for an apprehension scene. If I have a bad guy back there, and I have my dog here, and I'm telling this bad guy, hey, stop, put your hands in the air. I don't need my dog stopping and putting his hands in the air. <laughs> you know, but if I tell my dog, off legging, I told my dog to lay down and be quiet, I didn't tell that guy anything. So it doesn't confuse the apprehension scene. If I say stop, I don't want my dog to stop. I say go, you know what I mean? Tell the dog to go and then the bad guy goes, you know. So it just doesn't confuse it. That's why we, we typically use it. How many basic commands? Wait, six, six, five, seven, seven, total. Yes, sir. Uh, in Woodhaven, Michigan, uh, if they had a dog through, they go through a tire. 
he was famous for finding drugs and money. Now, I can understand how you get them to look for the drugs, but uh, do you teach them to look for money also? Or, or is that because someone was touching drugs and touched the money? And That's exactly it. The dog is not looking for money. As a matter of fact, we proof the dog off money. In other words, we'll put it out and correct the dog if he hits money. We don't want him hitting money, we want him hitting narcotics. So if, if I handle a bunch of marijuana and then I start counting cash, that marijuana odor is getting all over the money. Okay, so when I hide the, their money and the dog runs and hits it, he's not hitting on the money, he's hitting on the marijuana odor on the money. Now, some people say, well, how can that be? It's simple. If you take a carp and you put it in an ammo can, a steel box, and you put it in the sun for two days. Carp, fish. Carp, yeah, fish, okay? In the sun for two days. You take, take the ammo can, open it up, and it'll knock you down for the smell, right? You empty it out, you wash it out, you close it back up and put it in the sun for two days. You open it back up, what are you going to smell? Carp. How's that possible? The carp's gone. It's called residual odor. So by them handling the narcotic and touching the money, they're putting that odor on the money. You can't see it, you can't smell it, but it's there. Another example would be if you've ever been to a party and people smoked and then you went home the next day and your clothes, you go, what in the world? I wasn't smoking, why do I smell like this? Right? Well, that's residual odor. That odor is adhered into the cottons of your shirt or whatever and you can smell it now. So the way they, they find the narcotic on the money is there's narcotic on the money. Okay, if there's not, then the dog won't indicate on it. He'll pass it by. Yes, ma'am. At, at Detroit Metro, the airport, they have the cutest dog. He's a beagle, or she is a beagle. And um, he's an end dog. Mm -hmm. So, you know. He's the Department of Agriculture, that's all they use is beagles. If you've ever been on a cruise, beagles is going to search your luggage. So they're not looking for drugs, they're working for vegetables, fruits. That's what they're looking for. Uh, at, at the airport, the airports they use them. Uh, any port of entry. You don't see them too much at the, the Spanish port of entries. Uh, they're drug dogs, usually. But their dogs will also indicate on people. In other words, if you put a person in the trunk, the dog will indicate that as well. They train the dog to find people as well as narcotics. Now for us, we couldn't do that in that sense. Okay, because we're not a port of entry, but because they're on a port of entry, they can train them to do anything they want them to do. You follow? Yes, ma'am. What do you do with the dog when you um, retire the dog? Do you have to be deprogrammed? What do we do with the dogs when we retire the dogs? George, you want to take that? The state of Ohio has a, a ORC has a law that if you retire your dog, you have the first option to buy the dog, to purchase the dog from the Police Department, the Sheriff's Office, whatever, for the cost of one dollar. There has to be a money transfer. And then that dog goes home with you and that is now your personal dog. Now, everyone says, you know, that's great, you got this dog. However, what comes with that is, why did you retire the dog in the first place? Probably a medical issue. Oh, can't work anymore, <laughs> has some sort of issue. Now I have to pay all the vet bills. But, if you remember one thing, this dog is with me 24-7 for eight, 10 years on the road. I see this dog more than I see my family. You know, he goes to work with me. Most people that work see their dog for maybe four hours a day. They go to work, they come home, they may see the dog for four hours a day, and during that time they're cooking, they're cleaning, they're doing dishes, they're picking up, then they take a shower, they go to bed. This dog's with me all the time. I cannot go to the restroom, take a shower that, 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 without that dog trying to bust in the door to come in there and be with me. So he is by me all the time. So, yes, that dog is part of my family, and I am taking him when he retires. And I don't care how much it costs. I'm going to pay them that bills to keep him alive the best I can until it's like that stage where there's no sense. Mm -hmm. They, they, they probably treat you, the vet, vet probably treats you okay. The, the, the okay. vets treat us very well. The vet we have here in town, um, plus the veterinarian, uh, Dr. Zimmerman, he treats us very, very, very well. Yes. I mean, in, in any other vet, for that matter, I'm sure would, would assist, especially if we had an injury on the road or whatever. I'm not to take away from anyone else, but that's who we go through, and that's he, he is excellent.
guys and his Tim and his staff take care of us. Great. Yes. Yep. There was just a story within the last <clears throat> week on our local TV about a cop retired. His dog retired too. He was nine mm -hmm. years old. Yeah. So he was a family pet. Yeah. yeah. But they both retired yeah. together. So. That's ideal. He hasn't been through, I don't think none of you have. I've been through it three times. When my old man retired, he got to stay in the house until the day he died. The young man had to stay in the kennel. Okay? Once the old man died, then the young man came in the house, and he lived the rest of his life in the house with my family. And that went on three times. Okay? And you know, all of them died in my lap in the living room. I, I had the vet come to the house to put him to sleep. My last one, I didn't have to. He, he laid in front of the TV and went. I, it was a darn, he acted like a little puppy that morning. He's running around the house, and I'm like, what are you doing? And my wife and I went to the kitchen to make lunch, and we hadn't heard him and seen him for a little bit. So I looked in there, and he's laying down on the floor, so I never thought nothing of it. We go back to cooking and eating, and when we get done eating, he still hasn't come to see what we're doing. And I went, what the heck? And he had passed on. But if you got to go, I guess that's the way to go. He laid down and went to sleep. All right, isn't this guy, these guys? Yes. Yeah. 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 Yeah.